So, the Minecraft world record was broken just earlier this week. But what if I could tell you a random seed of Minecraft has been beaten in under four minutes before? That's right. These world records are what's known as RSG world records, which stands for Random Seed Glitchless. But if we could really unlock 100% of our brain and use any glitch we wanted to in a Minecraft speedrun, this is the time that we could get. Ensler broke the Random Seed Glitched world record just a week ago with a 3 minutes and 51 seconds time. Let's go through it. We can see in this wall preview here, Ensler has nine different versions of Minecraft open. And in this right instance over here, you can see that they have a ruined portal shown by the netherrack, but also a village. This is awesome because they're able to duplicate things that they could find in this nether portal, ideally maybe an obsidian, but also they can get food, they can get beds instantly. And by duplicating them, it's going to help a ton. But there's something even luckier that happens as soon as they join this world. And you can see it just there in the top left corner. An Enderman teleports from outside of a cave. So Ensler is now able to kill this Enderman, get it to drop the Ender Pearl, and then duplicate that, allowing them to have infinite Ender Pearls before she even enters the Nether. Before we continue here, you can see that Ensler pulls open their Task Manager, and this is how they're going to be able to to restart the world without the world saving, which is how the duplication glitch works. So what Ensler's doing in the background right now is causing their game to lag on purpose, meaning that it takes up more memory in their system. This means that save states won't be fully saved. So if they kill this Enderman right now and then re-log into the world because maybe it didn't drop the Ender Pearl, the Enderman would still be there so they can have a second chance at getting that Ender Pearl. So as you can see here, as Ensler kills this Enderman the first time round, no pearl actually drops. So what they're going to do is they're going to go and kill this instance or force end task in Task Manager. Then when they reload the world, the Enderman's going to be back in that boat, ready to be killed again. And as they join back into the world for the second time, the Enderman is still here, able to crit it, and they get the Ender Pearl drop. Ensler now has an Ender Pearl, some wood, a bed and this one obsidian. What they're now able to do is use a duplication glitch to duplicate as many times as they want all of these ender pearls and obsidian. And obviously just duplicating it the first time will only make them go from one ender pearl to two ender pearls, but then it'll go from two ender pearls to four, then to eight, 16, 32, and it really does start to ramp up quickly. And even though that might take quite a long time in the real world, for example, on this right-hand side timer over here, it won't actually spend a lot of time in the game, meaning that the in-game time on the left-hand side will stay quite low. And that's how the Random Seed Glitched World Record can be so fast. So as you can see here, Ensler starts to throw out all of the important items that are going to be duplicated and then ends the task on Task Manager. This created a save state just before she threw out those items, meaning that they're going to be both in her inventory and on the ground so that they're then duplicated. And as you can see here, when she joins back into the world, she's duplicated all of those items. And it's going to happen again and again and again. And Ensla actually has cut this out of the video because, you know, as, as you can see on the screen, a lot of the time spent outside of the game is just going to be cut out because it's actually not as important. There is the full unedited run in the description, but there's no point in us watching that either because it doesn't really help that much. It helps for verification purposes. So to be put on the leaderboards and stuff to make sure that Ensler is not cheated in the background or anything. But all it is is a simple duplication glitch that happens a good few times. And now just a few dupes later, they're able to throw out a stack of ender pearls and 16 obsidian. They're going to rejoin this world. And as they rejoin this world, they're going to duplicate all of their items. And you can see that they have 32 obsidian now and they also have 32 ender pearls. This is going to allow them to travel and enter the nether super fast. But as you can also see, this is under one minute of in-game time. They've actually spent 11 minutes of real time in this run, but most of that was spent, you know, in the task manager, reopening the world, that sort of thing that wasn't actually spent in the game. And only the in-game time matters when it comes to the leaderboards. So we can see here, Ensler is actually entering the nether at 56 seconds in-game. And because they already have their pearls, obsidian 
and beds. They don't actually need to find a bastion. So instead, all they're going to be looking for at the start here is for a fortress. We can see the fortress on the left just here, but as they throw their pearl, Ensla quits the world and rejoins it. This gives you three seconds of invincibility, which is what they use to negate any ender pearl damage and any other damage throughout the run. They're able to just quickly quit the world and rejoin it, meaning that they don't take any damage and don't need anywhere near as much food. You can see that they use the save and quit bug again to make sure they don't use any of their hearts. They have a blaze on their left. I don't know if they saw it. There we go. Didn't see it the first time, but sees one now. And after making a save state, they're able to kill the blaze, get their one rod. And now what they can do is duplicate that one blaze rod until they have enough to be able to exit the nether and find out exactly where their stronghold is. Now they're making gold pickaxes and duplicating everything so that they're able to travel through the nether much easier. One thing that you notice right there is that they're actually crafting a composter. A composter is a bit of a weird thing to have this deep into the run. However, something you can do with a composter is actually allow yourself to x-ray, mostly used in the stronghold to find where the portal room is. Obviously, this is a glitch, but because it's a glitched speedrun, they're allowed to. So by using a piston and a composter, I think there's a slightly easier setup, um, but this is just the example that I found on YouTube. You're actually allowed to push yourself into the composter and it allows you to see all of the caves around you in this kind of x-ray like format so if you're in the stronghold you're able to find the portal room a lot easier something that ensler also mentioned during this part of the run is that you can see that they've got nine of these beds after duplicating them a few times this isn't actually the fastest way to kill the ender dragon in the glitched version there's actually a glitch that was found by amazing speedrunner geo square good friend of mine uh, about five years ago now if you have an end crystal, which just requires some glass, a gas tier, and an ender eye, you're able to place this. If you can place the end crystal in the end before the dragon spawns, this allows the portal to actually be open at the middle, meaning that the dragon never spawns. You kind of glitch out the game to make it think that the dragon's already spawned, meaning that this must mean the end portal is open. So it opens up the end portal without you even having to kill the dragon. This is obviously a glitch, so it's not used in regular glitchless runs, in RSG runs. However, it can be used in random seed runs. I asked Ensler why exactly they decided to go for zero cycle rather than the end crystal skip. And that was mostly because of RNG. They would have needed to try and get a ghast spawn. They would have needed to spawn into a desert or maybe a beach so that they can get some sand to smelt things up. They also don't have a furnace. It's just a lot of things that they would have needed. Uh, instead, they know that they can guarantee themselves to complete this zero cycle using the save and quit, making sure they take no damage from all of those ender pearls and such. It's just a really reliable way of killing the dragon quickly not instantly, like the end crystal does, but because they knew that this pace was unheard of before, they wanted to make sure that they could just finish out the run. She didn't want to, you know, potentially mess something up with the end crystal or get unlucky with maybe a bad spawn and that sort of thing. Bear in mind, the world record before Ensler's run wasn't even a sub five. So this is the first sub five and the first sub four in random seed glitched. Also, this DVD thing is just something that Ensla puts over her stream. It's, you know, something you're going to have to deal with for the rest of the run. <laughs> and you can see them leaving the nether at 1 minute and 55 seconds. They're freaking out. They're really excited about this. And they do spawn into a desert, which means they could have potentially forced the end crystal here, but they decided against it. Uh, and after DMing them, they said, looking in hindsight, I could have gone for end crystal. SSVs, Soul Sand Valleys, which is where the uh, fortress was, are pretty good for ghasts. After speaking to other glitch runners about it afterwards, it wouldn't have quite made this run into a sub-3 run, but it would have been close to a sub-330, which would have been immense. Obviously, as I say, the previous world record was over five minutes. So already cutting it down to a sub-five minute time, and then even to a sub-four minute time, if this could have been a sub-330, this could have been one of the final world records in this category ever but as it stands it's still an insane run and let's see how the rest of this run plays out
So you can hear that Ensler is debating onto whether they decide to duplicate right now or whether they decide to measure eyes and go straight to the stronghold. It's a tough decision. I think they decide to duplicate. I think it's required because a couple of extra gold pickaxes is probably a good thing, uh, as well as obviously being able to duplicate the eyes of Ender are pretty useful too. They grab a piece of sand just in case they do spot a ghast in the nether, but I don't think they do. You can see them going for the duplication glitch once again here. And obviously this is unprecedented pace. It's very unsurprising that they're super nervous right now. You can see after just a few more duplication glitches, they are up to eight blaze rods. All of the pearls, all of the obsidian, all of the beds that they're going to need at two minutes. So now that they've thrown their eyes and found where their stronghold is, they're going to head back to the nether and travel through the nether to hit the stronghold. They actually throw a pearl in the slight wrong direction here. They're pausing and thinking about every single decision because they don't need to worry about exactly spending time on the pause menu. Uh, and by kind of abusing this in a sense, it's a really, really good way of guaranteeing that they're going to get an amazing time here. And as they enter into the stronghold at 2 minutes and 47 seconds. And you can see here... Or as they say on screen, they also messaged me this. Rubly, who was the previous world record holder, really wanted her to do composter x-ray, the thing that I showed before. But instead, Ensler does a glitchless strat, which is by using the pie chart. And by looking for this pink salmon spike here, when that spikes up, it kind of means you're looking towards a spawner. And obviously there's a spawner inside the portal room. By using this, this is a glitchless method. Obviously this is all in-game and no glitches are used for this. This is just in the debug menu. However, it is a lot less consistent than using Composter X-Ray. Rubly wanted there to be a consistent way to finish the run. And I think that Ensler wanted to go for a little bit of a high roll here. Uh, and I love that because it really makes the world record stand out even more. They did get a spike, which is fantastic. And they're entering the portal room here. Obviously, they pause to make sure that they take no damage when the pearl lands. And this is going to be the zero cycle. Really clean portal entry here. And they're going for the zero cycle. It's all down to this. Cage, beautifully easy zero cycle here. Still, immense, immense pressure. No one's been on this pace ever before. Oh no! They misplaced a block, which is not ideal. It looks like this situation's pretty bleak because they place a block in the wrong spot. They really wanted to get one higher so they're able to place a bed either on top of this obsidian or move the obsidian one down so you're able to place a, a, a bed on the side of this obsidian. However, world-renowned Zero Cycle Goat Camo was luckily in the chat at this exact moment backseating and able to say you can place an obsidian to the side and after building to the side they have a ton of beds and even though the height looks pretty low at the start Ensler is able to use the zero cycle on half a heart pearl down you can see their hands shaking as they enter the portal here and the reaction to the first ever time Minecraft was beaten on a random seed in under four minutes. Please, whatever you do, go and subscribe to Ensler. The link is down in the description. Make sure you click subscribe, click the like, go and interact with Ensler. The random seed category is a really, really impressive one. Although it's different strategies to RSG, they are still as difficult and uh, require so much hard work and dedication to get a world record that's this immense and this groundbreaking. So once again, massive congrats to Ensler, and I think that's all from me. Uh, to hear another video about exactly why this world record is going to now be verified, potentially, um, stick around and hit subscribe on my channel as well. All right, thanks guys. Bye.